Some games are absolutely enormous and are just filled with places to explore, but what about the stuff that ends up cut? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 unused areas in video games you never saw. Starting off with number 10 is Halo 3's Guardian Forest. Now, the amount of cut content from Halo 2 alone is huge. They basically had to redo the game from scratch at the last minute, and it's kind of a miracle that we got as much of the game as we did. In comparison, Halo 3 is mostly intact, except for this pretty awesome sounding level called the Guardian Forest. Set in a forest best described as Cyclopean, Master Chief would have entered this level on some kind of train, crawl through a dense, creepy forest, and then go through this massive tree structure to take on the Guardian enemy for the first time. After all that, there would be an aerial battle sequence where Chief Pilot it's a hornet and takes on this gigantic strato sentinel not much remains the actual level other than a lot of concept art but the concept for this stage was used for the multiplayer map guardian so that gives us the best idea as to what this level would have conceptually looked like even for halo 3 the level sounded pretty ambitious and there were probably too many unique ideas for what basically amounts for a filler level so bungie cut it fairly early in production and number nine is dark souls 3 god's grave from Software is a developer that is no stranger to massively reworking their games during development, and this isn't the only time one of their games will show up on this list. Pretty much every Dark Souls has parts of levels, bosses, enemies, stuff that never gets used, but it's rare when an entire location goes unused. Dark Souls games tend to give their areas pretty intriguing names, and this place is no different. When I hear the name God's Grave, I'm pretty curious. I want to see what this place's deal is. But uh, all that remains in the game to find to some geometry and the name. From the single image I was able to find on the Dark Souls fandom wiki, it looks like the place was kind of a mix between the catacombs and the lost Isolith from Dark Souls 1. The top half of the area would have been a dense forest, while the rest would have been some kind of creepy catacombs. Two bosses were supposed to be in this area, and they were likely repurposed elsewhere. Osiris, the consumed king, was originally going to be here, and used to be called the dragon that was an angel, and the mother dragon, which exists in the game, but you don't fight it at the end of the Arch Dragon Peak. Certain parts of the level were reused for the Ring City DLC as well, so even though this level is something we'll never see, there's pieces of it all over the place. At number 8 was Kaelston from Mass Effect. This was, I mean, fairly short for a role-playing game. And like a lot of the games on this list, it went through some major, major revisions before becoming the game we know today. One of the most noteworthy changes was Liara's recruitment mission, which used to be completely different. Instead of taking place on the volcanic planet Therium, like how it works in the Finnish game, originally Liara would have been on Kaelston, which would have been another hub-based area similar to Pharos and Ovaria. Instead of rescuing her from a Prothean and ruin that's under attack from the Geth, you'd have to deal with a corrupt administrator and a Salarian drug lord. There would have been a mission where you could free some prostitutes too, so that's the kind of place you're looking at here. The hub, originally called the Throwdown Plaza, was later reused in the Bring Down the Sky DLC, but it would have been probably more interesting to explore this whole area. The idea of a more corrupt, crime-infested area of the galaxy was later used in Mass Effect 2, but it still would have been fun to have all that stuff appear in the original game. At number 7 is Symphony of the Night's Underground Garden. Kind of a cheat, but uh, this isn't exactly an area nobody's seen. But the amount of people who have actually seen this area in the game has got to be pretty small. For gamers of a certain age, uh, this one was pretty huge. In Symphony of the Night, there's an entire area cut from the game originally meant to connect to the entrance hall. The way in was one of those big mysteries that I remember seeing tons of discussion about. Thing is, there was actually a version of the game that included the area, the Sega Saturn version. Now, this version of the game never saw a re-release anywhere, so if you want to see the underground garden, the only way to do it is on a Saturn or emulator. The console was never really popular in the United States, so getting one with an actually working disc reader is difficult. So if you want to access this level legitimately, it's oof, extremely difficult. The level's not all that exciting either. Even if these human face tree enemies are like weird as hell and kind of a trippy thing to see. This is one of the rare levels that was cut from a game and just eventually got back in. Only for the version that was the hardest to get and play by a, a huge margin. <laughs> like ridiculous. Like look around at some of the prices for the Saturn version of this game on eBay. I I'm not paying that much just for a level. 
And number six is Deus Ex's White House. One of the first levels designed for the original Deus Ex ended up being one of the first levels cut. The mission spawned from a simple idea. The game's director, Warren Spector, wanted to fully recreate the White House in a game and let the player explore it fully. Using actual White House blueprints, they recreated the space as best as they could. For years, fans speculated the level was cut because the Secret Service put a stop to it, but the actual reason the level didn't get added was a lot more mundane. It was too big for the game engine. Certain levels in the game that were large had to be split into separate sections, but Warren Spector felt the integrity of the White House level would pretty much be ruined if they split it up, so they just cut it. The White House wasn't the only mostly complete level to get cut from the game. There was also an area called Mount Weather, which was a government bunker. Out of all the things cut from Deus Ex, these two levels are described as the truly deleted scenes of Deus Ex. At number 5 is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2's HK Factory. Now this was a game with a famously rocky development, and because of that a lot of the game ended up on the chopping block. One of the most intriguing cuts was this area though, the HK Manufacturing Plant, a secret production where HK series assassin droids are built. Now there was quite a bit of stuff made for this left in the game, so like there was so much that modders actually managed to restore this area with the Sith Lord's restored content mod. And even though it's back in the game, actually reaching the place is pretty difficult. You need to experience three separate HK droid encounters with HK-47 in your party to actually discover the location of the factory. So if HK-47 isn't with you, you're never going to reach this place in the mod version. And number four is God of War 2's Lost Levels. Uh, What an ambitious game, right? Like, it covered in this mini documentary, there was a bonus in the game. Yeah, they were like, ah, you could probably stand to know more about the development of this game. Um, in that documentary, they revealed that there were a ton of levels that never came to fruition. The biggest was Atlantis, this entire underwater kingdom that Kratos would have explored. The boss of the area would have likely been Oceanus, the titan of the ocean, which would have been amazing. The basic idea of the area was reused on the PSP, God of War, Ghost of Sparta. So it wasn't completely wasted at least, but yeah, God of War, Ghost of Sparta was on the PSP. Other levels that were meant to appear include Mount Etna, a lava level, and the Rhodes Marketplace, which would have been part of an expanded Rhodes level and the Road to Sparta, which saw Kratos fighting enemies with a war going on in the background. I I don't know how this would have fit into the story, but it likely would have been either part of the Fates visions at the end or some kind of flashback. At least that's what I think. And number three is Metal Gear Solid V's Kingdom of the Flies. Now, we're starting to get in some heavy hitters here. One of the most infamous examples of cut content of all time is Chapter 3 in Metal Gear Solid V, which would have concluded the story of the game. Yeah, the ending of this game is cut content. Remember how in the final game there's a cutscene where Eli steals the Metal Gear and escapes from other base and it's never followed up on? Eli being Liquid Snake. Well, there's supposed to be a mission to wrap the story up where Big Boss would follow Eli to a tropical island and be forced to deal with his little army of child soldiers. The challenge there would have been how you deal with them. I I guess it's likely that the game probably wouldn't let you just kill children, so you'd probably have to come up with creative solutions to get through. The mission would have ended with the final confrontation of Eli piloting Metal Gear, which sounds like a lot more satisfying of an ending than we actually got. All this was documented in a special feature from the game's special edition Blu-ray, which makes the whole thing sound pretty interesting. The Kingdom of the Flies is noteworthy because it's not just a random area, it's the entire final mission of the game. And number two is Demon Souls, the sixth archstone, another truly infamous piece of cut content. In the Nexus, the hub area of the game, there's six archstones, all of which take you to different levels in the game. They all work except one, the sixth one, which for some reason is broken. Most players who see that probably think they'll eventually get it fixed or that this entrance is to the final level that unlocks after you do everything else, but it's just cut content. The game files contain a lot of what this area was supposed to be, including a lot of nearly finished enemies, which implies the place was cut fairly late in development. The area looks like it would have been a snowy fortress on top of a mountain populated with a lot of beast-like enemies. It's a concept From has gone back to with future games. Uh, The snowy castle looks like the painted world from Dark Souls 1, and the snake men and beast men enemies uh, look a lot like the arch dragon pit from Dark Souls 3 and the crumbling fair Missoula and Elden Ring, respectively. Before the PS5 remaster, a lot of people hoped Blueprint would restore this cut content back into the game. And while that would have been cool to see, it's probably best this stuff is left alone. I would like to see the stomach mouth Yeti maker return somewhere, though. I really enjoy the look of this guy. And finally, at number one, Final Fantasy XV's Nilfheim. All of Nilfheim. 
like, is there any relatively modern game out there with more cut content than Final Fantasy 15? You could pretty much make an entire list dedicated to this one game based on this list topic. So there's, I mean, a lot. Insomnia and Altissio were both meant to be larger cities, and you can actually see a lot of what they originally were in the game if you know where to look. That alone is tragic enough because both these locations are incredibly cool. But the biggest cut is the entire second half of the game. When you get to Nilfheim, the second continent, the game suddenly becomes just a completely linear experience. You skip from location to location while riding a train. The thing is, almost the entire content's actually built. Some parts of it more detailed than others, but the entire thing exists in game and can be explored on foot. Seriously, the landmass is huge. I've seen YouTube videos that spend 40 minutes or more just looking around. There's entire dungeons and towns that were cut from Nilfheim, along with major chunks of the story. Square Enix kind of really butchered the game in an attempt to make it semi-finished. So the fact they were even able to put out a complete game that, while it doesn't make the most sense of any game out there, makes at least a degree of sense. I'll say the second half of the game is not nearly as good as the first, but it's still impressive that they managed to cut so much out and have this work. But we can't help but wish they would have just taken more time and finished the game. Uh, it's never going to happen, obviously, though. And that sucks, because, man, the first half of this game is so good. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.